Hi guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Pavel also tournament and we're in for the finals. That's it. We have the last game for today, which is Disco Pumper versus Max Capone. We already know the whole top four that advance, uh, which is uh, Radu. Uh, Ooh, Disco cool, Pumper, nice. yeah. Disco Pumper, Max Capone, Rainy Hour and Chakruna. Yes, Three so... of those are known or really known or slightly known. And uh, Disco Pumper is the new face. That's true. So we have three known, three known player, which is really, uh, players, which is really important for the health of the game. Uh, like most of the people are guessing, it's like all RNG and stuff. But as you, as we can see, in a pool of 155 players, we have three known names uh, in the playoffs. So this is this is really sweet. And now we'll be jumping as fast as possible, I guess, um, to the uh, last game. And the meaning of the last game is not is not about advancing, but how do you advance? Because the seeds will be determined by the by the placement you have uh, in the qualifiers. But also wanted to remind you guys, this is an open tournament, so anyone can sign in and um, try to qualify for uh, for um, to the playoffs. And this is the first qualifier we had today. Uh, second one will be happening on the last day of May, so 31, this is Sunday. Then we have June 16 and July 11th. You can also find the information on the page uh, on the site you have uh, in our corner on the stream, which is Dr. Pepper DE. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry, Dr. Pepper DE. And uh, from each of the qualifier top four would advance to the playoffs. The players will happen on July 25 and 26, and 16 players will be battling in a two day event. To become the uh, the champion of the first Dr. Pepper also tournament. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, let me talk about Rainy Hour and uh, the other guys that qualified. So Rainy Hour is like sure. one of the m most known Korean players. Max Capone is a poker player, same as Life Coach. He still plays poker. As a matter of fact, he'll go to a poker tournament after this tournament, after this game in the Dr. Pepper tournament. He's a really known pro poker player in the scene. And now he started playing Hearthstone. He plays really good quality Hearthstone. He also takes his time a lot, as Life Coach does. <laughs> I played versus him in a tournament and he robbed me so many times. And he managed to beat me in the tournament. And then I managed to beat him in another tournament, I think, or on ladder. I don't remember well. So he's definitely a really good player. And then there's Chakron that we just watched. Played perfectly with some really interesting decks. And the last yep. one is Disco Pumper, which we will see now, now versus Max Capone. Yep, that's true. So, I'm really pumped for the last game, we'll see how it goes. And we have the gameplay. So, Handlock versus Midrange Druid, I guess. Handlock? Is it Handlock? Maybe it is, maybe it's uh, still a, a kind of ish Zeman... Uh, Zeman... Demon Lock. Uh, no, it's Handlock. Uh, Max Capone likes probably the same decks as Life Coach. Versus me, he, <laughs> versus me, he played like Handlock and then... I'm not sure about the others, but he plays something really controlish. He likes control style. I don't know. There must be something there. We see a really bad start for Disco Pumper. That's exactly what you don't want to see as a Druid player facing a handlock. You want to see the wild roots. You want to see the board growing. True. Do, do you call the Twilight Wake here? Mm. First here doesn't look that idea. sexy. First here is not sexy, but if you coin Twilight Drake, if your opponent has Keeper, he puts you in a really bad situation. Well, if you play Airframe Ring Farce well, here... It's better to play the Twilight Drake on turn 4 than on turn 6 when Druid can play the Keeper and Hero Power. So yeah, I, I guess I guess I would coin out Twilight Drake, you know? You can still play it on their turn 5, which is perfectly fine. In this situation, it was actually better how he did it. The Druid player had no play in turn 5, that's like... Such a bomber. Yeah, that's true. Well, you can't do Drake anything is about smash that. The board. So what? now you have to play the Twilight Drake. I mean, the, uh, keeper. the keeper. To and now we will see. We will see a possible defender of Argus on the Twilight Drake and the Farseer, and then trade with Farseer. You yeah. have Twilight Drake yeah. as a five-two, Farseer as a four-two. That's a pretty efficient board versus a Druid player. They don't have that way to remove the board. They have to use Force of Nature. And if mm -hmm. they use Force of Nature, oh, they right. don't have burst. If they don't have burst, they go they're not gonna win. Yeah, or you can just ignore and play your and other play your other Drake. Yeah, uh, I like ignoring more with the draw. No, he uh, goes for the defender of Argus. Interesting. Actually, defender of Argus is really good. 
But I would still favor the second Drake, you know? He's really close. It's a really co close call. The thing is that you want to keep the coin for Darter Boom, so it's between Defender of Argus and Twilight Drake. Let's see what both give you. Playing the second Twilight Drake means that you instantly throw away the first one. So you just kick the, kick the value that you got. And playing the Defender of Argus maximizes the value that you already have on board and gives you potential uh, more value with the second Twilight Drake later on. But does he have time to play the second Twilight Drake later on? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. I, I think he has like turn 6. He can tap into Twilight Drake. You don't care about the, the boom on turn 6, I would say. If you, play, if you can coin out a life tap on that turn... Uh, I would much rather coin Boom and then go like Twilight Drake BGH, what do you think of that? Oh, he still goes for the Twilight Drake, okay. Like, if he went for the Argus, he had to coin Boom, and then his opponent, if he played a Boom himself, he could go Twilight Drake BGH, and that way he used the mind the most efficient way possible, and also used the boy in the most efficient way possible. But what are the chances of your opponent also having Boom and also playing the Boom to answer your Boom? That's pretty mm -hmm, small chances. Mm -hmm. So that's why he decides to instantly cash on the value. And then decide to go into a Dr. Boom probably next turn. You have to play Boom on 6. Yeah, probably. Um, Sylvanas? So by the Sylvanas, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only play here. Like, other things that suck. Belcher doesn't do anything. It dies to Mortal Coil from the Twilight Drake. Doesn't achieve anything. Like, uh, Sylvanas now, if he doesn't have an Owl, um, guarantees you having something on board that will eventually take uh, another card from opponent. Hmm. Hmm. He doesn't really have any other options, does he? Yeah, no he doesn't. And Sylvanas fits well. Next turn is Ancient of Lord to draw. It's like only option also. Do you still play the Doctor Boom and ignore the Sylvanas? Mm, I guess so. What are all options? You can't play Defender of Argus on both, because then it procs the Sylvanas really easily. Yeah, and with Boom so... you also give your opponent the chance to steal something that's not that great. Yeah, so I guess it's still Dr. Boom turn. Unless you want to tap into an Owl, and then... Oh, that's risky. Nah. That's super risky. Well, if you get an Owl, then you can trade for the Sylvanas with the Drake and finish it off with the Mortal Coil, which will be perfect. But getting an Owl at this state of the game, which is 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 cards deep, so it's uh, around 12%. Uh, well, personally, I think that the only spot where you have to tap for an out is when you are in a really bad spot. And now he's in a really good spot. Oh. And he taps. Look at that. And he Arguses. What? It's not that bad. I think it's really bad. You can you can give your opponent a 5-5 taunt. Uh, is that something you're scared of? I don't know. 5-5 five, five taunt isn't that great. He can still have Dr. Boom and then coin out the Mortal Coil. Or Mortal Coil and then coin out the Dr. Boom. Well, if you if you will get... Even if you will get the Twilight Drake and you get an Owl, then you Owl the Twilight Drake <laughs> and Mortal Coil it. That would be perfect. But I guess you... You can... If he would have wrap this turn, it would be perfect. But he doesn't have it, so I guess he goes... You, you play Ancient of Law and just sacrifice your Sylvanas, and that's it. Mm. Let's see what he steals. Maybe he steals the Defender of Argus. He the gets four four, the 4-4, four four, which is not bad. I still think you, you go with the Ancient of Law. He could have steal the 5-5 five, five and heal it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that would have been like awesome. You, you give yourself an Ancient of War and an Ancient of Lore. Yeah, that would that's be great. Sweet. But now, yeah, he didn't think of that, Max Capone, that his opponent could do this kind of nifty plays. Oh, that is really defensive. Um, this allows Max to Mortal Coil. Actually, he can just coin the Rug. Hmm. I think you might Dr. Boom first to bait for BGH and then you rag. I don't think you have to go recklessly with the BGH. But you can. With, with the rag, I mean, sorry. You can trade into the 4-4 and then just rag. 
and then play boom next turn. I guess that's the best option. Like the rag. Well, the rag. No, you, you know what? I would actually play Doctor Boom here. Yeah, the rag is really bad if your opponent has a BGH. You give him the chance to come back into the game while you already yeah. are winning. Yeah, and Doctor Boom is not so, not so uh, weak to the Bingham Hunter. So I guess that's the play. You can sacrifice the Defender of August too, in case there will be a swipe, so you have more chances of killing the uh, Druid of the Claw with the bombs that will be killed from the swipe. And he goes for the rag. Okay. So he disagrees. He goes for the more risky play. Poker players know how to take risks most of the time. That's something you gain by playing that game, I think. Uh, what do you think is the best? Would you like swipe and trade? Play yeah, belch? swipe and trade and belcher. Seems like an okay play. Or sludge, I mean swipe, trade, ancient of law. Oh, first, ancient of law. See what you get. Maybe you will get an um, big game hunter. Or a combo. Oh, BGH, yeah. You can get BGH if you play lower. Hmm. I don't know what to say about this. Oh, he wants to full wipe the board. I don't like this at all. It's a it's a good way to clear the board, for sure. Yeah, but you could have played just Ancient of Law this turn. Mm, <sighs> I don't know. It feels like kind of a waste. It feels really defensive. I don't think this is a spot to be defensive. Like now we can just play boom. It's between Boom and the Giant, but it's probably Boom. Because you can play the Giant and the Sludge Belcher next turn. And Ragnar's of his own. Will he play it? Well, you have no... You can play double Belchers and go face with your... Uh, with your Druid of the Claw. And... <sighs> He has, he's lacking the Savage Roar. So that's, that's really sad. Um, the Druid is in a really bad spot. Because I think of should the play. slow start. Yeah, I Rug, know. Rug is the way to play this. I think I should have, I, I would just go for the Double Belcher, you know? Double Belcher into next turn, Wild Group first, and then see what's happening. You threaten with a, really a lot of damage. Oh. Oh wow. Those That RNG in this turn. And he's dead. To the oh, dark bomb. look at that. Damn. That bombs. He played the rug first just to tank the bombs. He played and the bombs perfectly. still went for the face. <laughs> he played it <that> perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> the boom bots. OP. Well, that was the first game for Max uh, Capone here. So he's um, he's one zero against um, who's he playing against? Uh, Disco Pumper. Yeah, Disco Pumper. <laughs> I said I will not forget his name. And look at that. yeah, <laughs> Lord, I lied. I lied. Well, anyway, um, Disco Pumper has still a way to redeem himself. Uh, he has two decks, which has uh, which has to be, uh, you know. Winners in the upcoming and, two games, and yeah. even if he loses, he'll be in the playoff. Yeah, it's like he's still in the playoff. He'll, he can game, redeem himself there. Yeah, and th I feel like this match is fully relaxed, fully relaxed for both players. You know, because they then need to win this game so they can just play Hudson and you know the usual usual way without any any kind of pressure on them. Yes, indeed. We see Max playing. A really control warrior, and uh, as I said, he likes control decks. Yeah, the problem is the Harrison Jones really sucks in this matchup. Well, if you throw it back, you'll not get it again in your starting hand, but you can draw into it. Yeah, I feel like it's a common occurrence, you know? Y you yeah. mulligan something away, and then you get it right back in the first draw. In the first draw, but you, know, you cannot get it in the mulligan at least. Yeah, yeah. that's true, that's true. Uh, we already saw warrior beating druid earlier right yeah i think it was against disco pumper too oh yeah right and disco pumper had wild growth into innervate emperor like the best possible start yeah. as a druid wait who's who 
Uh, Disco Pumper is a druid. Okay. He kept the druid after losing to Handlock. Druid didn't do that well for Disco Pumper. Well, he qual it qualified him, but other than that... Uh, Max decides to armor up over playing the Acolyte of Pain. That's really interesting. I kind of like that play. It allows you to kill stuff like Emperor or Druid of the Claw yeah, next turn. Yeah, that's true. And you can still play the weapon. Yeah, like, he could kill Coin Druid of the Claw. That was like a really good play. And now you can play Acolyte of Pain. No worries. I, I think he just goes with armor up each turn, and he plays the weapon right now, too. Yeah. I, I like Dark Light more, because if he has a play, you can still armor up and kill it. Oh, you can all heal the Druid of the Claw. Yeah, and that's what like, you're playing around. Never mind. He's going for the Engital Floor, which just dies to the Shield Slam. Mm -hmm, but at least he gets more value for the Emperor next turn, which is really important. It's a little bit greedy, don't you think? I think it's greedy, but I think it's okay. Like, you have the Emperor in your hand. So if you drop Emperor next turn, then you have, like, really, really high pressure cards on the Warrior. And the Warrior has a problem uh, with dealing with much, uh, with, you know, um, huge amount of creatures unless he has Brawl. Well, we know he has the Brawl in hand, but still, that's the strategy you want to go, for, you want to go with. Oh, wait, Dr. Boom. Never mind. I think you always play Boom, but Emperor is a better play here than Boom. Actually, no, no, Boom is best, always. Boom is better versus Acolyte, though. <laughs> it's really weird. Well, if you play Boom, you give, you give him at least two draws. That's kind of unfortunate. Yes, and in that two draws, he can get um, Execute. Well, you don't know if he has his good or not, so we are just say stating this, looking at both players' hands. Yeah, of course. So he might already think his opponent has execute, and if he thinks that his opponent already has execute, playing Emperor is worse than Boom, so playing Boom is better. But looking at the hands of the players, playing Emperor looks better. So I wouldn't mind any play from Disco Pumper. He goes for the Emperor, I think. Emperor is nice, hard to remove. Gives you a lot of value. Well, Max will have to use the weapon, the Acolyte of Pain, and the Whirlwind, which is not bad. Because you can just drop the Whirlwind right now to gain another card. Maybe it will be a Execute, but you, want, you don't want to use the Execute anyway on that creature if you have like Acolyte of Pain. Maybe he will get a Taskmaster. Does it change anything? No, that's still free damage. Why does he play the armor smith before? Does he run Battle Rage and Control Warrior? I don't think so. Or is the armor that valuable? He can still trade with a weapon, that's okay, I guess. And I, he, think, he, I think that was okay. Yeah, he trained with the BGH too. For the boom. He got two additional armor, so he only gets free damage from the from the Emperor? I guess that's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Hmm. What what can the Druid player do? You boom and then rough? Hmm. There's so many really, options now. Boom looks better because you already saw the Whirlwind, but it's still not perfect because you know that your opponent has a 1-3. Well, he decides to not play the Doctor Boom. Dr. So, Boom is green and you don't play him. That has to be a mistake. And it is for six mana, right? It's really weird. <laughs> I guess you charge into the armor smith, right? Yeah. Oh, he didn't. Okay. He's just going for the face. Threatening combo, maybe. He wants to show his opponent that he has a lot of damage in the hand. Double Savage War with Force of Nature. That or just maybe combo. Hmm. I guess you still... Do you armor up? I was thinking about armor right oh, now. What if you go playing Sylvanas? Dies with the board, but... 
Are you really sad if he dies with the board? No, I would play Dr. Boom. You'd play Dr. Boom? Yeah. yeah. Boom is bad. Not good. Uh, Boom is not bad, I mean. Um, it allows you to make a comeback. Like, the Sylvanas kind of makes a comeback immediately, but Dr. Boom makes a bigger comeback, especially that he has to deal with the armor smith first. Otherwise, the bombs will generate armor too, which is problematic, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, what can a druid player do? He's in a really awkward spot. We might mm. see a uh, game deciding a game deciding brawl. Uh, the thing is that Disco Pumper was really afraid of playing into the brawl. Maybe that's why he didn't play Doctor Boom. I don't agree with that completely. Like, th if there will be a brawl, there will be a brawl. You can't play around one card, you know. It's like yeah. being around Big Game Hunter at the start of the game. Doesn't really make much sense. Yeah, you usually shouldn't play around cards unless you're in a spot where you, you afford to. And now he's definitely not in a spot where he can afford to play around anything. Yep. that's true. I think you just play boom, push face. Savage on next turn. Easy game. Well, Warrior will probably have something to say about that, but... That's like <laughs> something else. Actually, you can play, you can play Shade. I think killing Dimer Smith is justified. Oh. Killing Dimer Smith is justified. You lose yep. 5 damage in the race, but you gain board presence, you gain more damage to, for the next turn, and your opponent can just earn way more armor if he has a, any way to trigger his minions. True, so, no, so in this situation, what do you do? Do you brawl? Blow, brawl first, and then see? You kind you of lose damage. Brawl. What about shield um, armor up, shield slam the 2 2, go face with everything, and then brawl? No, because if the if his boom survives, you're in a really bad spot. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, right. You might want to just BGH that and dominate the board with shield slamming the tiger. Like, you, first boom bots. Yeah, boom bots, and then. You have to get rid of the tiger somehow. Maybe with Dr. Boom. Oh, that's close enough. He can well, use the Shield Slam now. Now it's a range of Shield Slam, yeah, so it's okay. He obviously wanted 3. It's a big difference. Like, if you would hit for 3 or 4, he could then play Harrison Yeah. That's, that's just insane. Big. What? He would sacrifice 7 points of damage to the bomb? Well, he has to, kinda. Like... He wants to defend the big game Hunter. No, no, no. He, wants... he just wants not to die to a combo. Oh, well, you don't like to combo, if you show some that. He wanted to protect the big game hunter, totally justified. Tot totally justified, but you're playing to swipe now. Um, you're still on equal foot with the druid, like, you just need that small legendary to turn the game around as what the warrior player. Harrison is gonna be useless, so his chance there was the bombs hitting better. Hmm. The Druid player can still pressure the board a lot. Um, combo is lethal almost any at any time. He can feed the hero power because the Savage Roar is cheaper. So he, ha he has exactly that if the if uh, Max doesn't hero power next turn. I guess you have to play Sylvanas anyway. Do you have to play Sylvanas? Yeah, I have Brawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's one of the ways you can go back into this game. Yeah, Sylvanas and then next time Brawl Harrison. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You that Brawl, still the Survivor, play Harrison. You're already in a really good spot. And then you just finish the game with Ranaros and Gromash. I think that is yep. definitely the winning play. That's for sure the winning play. Yeah, that has to be the uh, the play. Like I don't see anything else. Um, he might just yolo rag, but that's nah, not that efficient. Nah, nah, nah. I like Sylvanas even, way more. Even if it hits uh, the Belcher, there's still one minion, so I don't see a way. Like there's no easy way of dealing with that uh, with that little slime apart from gromashing it, right? That's kind of unproductive, I would say. Yes, you're right. Um, 
Let's mm. see. He we see the keeper of the grove, so that denies like the brawl value. Um, shade of Naxxramas. He will go to face, or he will trade. No, he has to go to face. He can still brawl here. He has to. Depending on the draw. He will he will kill the Belcher here and then brawl. We see that Kroll does master. Can you just rag? Kill Belcher, rag, hero power? Maybe that's uh, an option too. I, I really like the brawl here. Trade and brawl and then Harrison. That way you play the Harrison, which is like a dead card anyways. You fit in the mana curve. You are in a pretty good spot. If Sivana survives, you're in a super good spot. Yep. And this is really important. Now the Savannah's dead. And the, oh, Shade of Stramus is alive, which is really important. He says he'll play because he expects the combo. There's so no now, combo. Now it's like a really deciding turn. He will know his opponent doesn't have combo. Well, the lore might not guarantee that because he might join into the Force of Nature with it. Let's see. Shade of Naxxamas yep, and the Force of Nature. Nature. Yeah, that so that should be game soon. That should be game next turn. Uh, not really. Uh, the Harrison can trade into the lore and then Ragnaros can deal with one of the Shade of Naxxramas. So that's still game. No, because he can hero power. Oh, uh, it's one of lethal if he hits, if he hits the free free shade. Yeah. So he needs the, to hit the free free shade or he loses the game. Yeah, that's 33%. 33%, yes, indeed. Let's see, Yolo Rag. And? And it hits the 2-2. Two -two. So that's, it's, that's it's the exactly end of lethal. the game. Oh, it's actually, well, it's actually, it was actually it, lethal. Yeah, it, with, uh... we forgot that he has hero power. He can use it even with the innovate, so... Yeah, yeah, never mind. Why is he BMing? I have no idea. He wanted but to BM and Max doesn't want to waste time, yeah. Just denied it. So now we go to the final game. It's Max's Warrior versus... What did Disco Pumper have? Uh, was it the Hunter? Not really sure if it was the Hunter. I guess it was the Hunter, but I'm not really sure. Too many matches today. Too many players. Yeah, too, too many different builds. No, it's Warrior versus Warrior. So we're in was it for Patron? Us. It's the Resident Sleeper here. It was the Patron one, it's not Resident Sleeper. And now Max is favored to win. Like, Control Warrior is favored over Patron Warrior most of the time, unless the Patron has, like, the nuts. Hmm. Um, the Patron seems to have a really good hand. I, I would keep it all. Not sure if it's better to just coin Acolyte into Krolto's Master or just play on Curve with the Armos and Facolite and Krolto's Master on turn 4. Keep the slam for something big. Slam is really efficient to clear the belchers. I like slam. Oh, he decides to only keep the acolyte of pain. And we see a really bad hand on Max's side. Uh, well, really slow start for both players. So yeah. we see an acolyte of pain. The Alkalite of Pain without any activators is kind of useless. It only, will, it will only cycle. And he after... keeps the fire URX. Smork? Yeah, what, when you see that, you know that's uh, that's a Patron Warrior. That's like only only almost viable when you play a Patron Warrior. It tells you one more thing. It tells you that he has one more weapon. Either the second URX or a Death Bite. Yep. So you kill this one and you play your own Alkalite of Pain. Yes. I didn't really like that first attack to the face because you plan into playing your acolyte into Gnomish Inventor, so that means that for the next three turns you will not be able to equip any other weapon. So why hit the face? I don't know. That was a bit sketchy. I think he just denied two points of armor, which might resolve into denying a whole shield slam. You know? Yeah, but what can they shield slam from you in the early game? It's not something that's that great of a value. I like acolyte pain, you know. Would you show them an Acolyte of Pain? Sometimes, maybe, because it's Patron. But why would you coin out a uh, Gnomish Inventor? Like, the coin is one of the most important cards when you play combo decks. I don't really have any idea. Uh, he just doesn't want his Acolyte to get Death's Bite. He wants his Gnomish to get Death's Bite, so then he can... I don't know, I have no idea. 
there's not that many reasons for that. And again, like now if he had this, the first attack with the, of the weapon, he could play the Gnomish Inventor, the second one. So just hitting to the face again was, in my opinion, a misplay. You know, I would have done the same, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. That will be that that has been a misplay here. It's almost always a misplay with such a hand where you want to play on curve. It's just I learned this the hard way by playing Rogue. If you have place for the following turns, keep the weapon. You don't need to use it because if you use it, you will not have enough mana to re dagger and still play the curve. And, and you regret attacking the face. So he lacks a inner rage here because if he would have an inner rage, I would actually go. No, it's turn five. Never mind. It's turn or five. Turn six. Only turn yeah. six. Eventually turn seven to get the better combo out. Still an efficient way to deal with the sludge. Uh, he also has the Death's Bite. He might want to keep the Death's Bite next turn to go Green Patron, Whirlwind, execute Death's Bite on turn 7. What do you think of that? Then having the Gromash to push on turn 8. Yeah. It's a really efficient thing, but we see Tori sent from Max. Well, that. that um, I guess that would be an execute. Maybe not. No, no, actually, no. It would be just a Death's Bite attack. Yeah. But then Max can play whatever he wants on the empty board. Either Gromash, Dr. Boom, or maybe Death by Belcher, if he likes to do so. What do you think about Acolyte of Pain, uh, Death Spite, Whirlwind? Not enough mana for that. Oh, yeah, never mind. What I'm talking about. Need eight about. mana for that. Yeah, sure, sorry. I'm getting too tired. Uh, Acolyte of Pain, Whirlwind Execute in this situation then. Not that great, you wanna keep the world for Green Patron. The only really good play is Death's Bite because it allows you to just go ham the next turn on the Green Patrons. Yeah, true. But the Emperor already done its job. So yes. zero mana shield slam is really important. The same as the same goes for the Gromash for seven mana. Um the Gromash for 7 mana, but you don't have any activator. Mm -hmm. And even though he has... He can get really punished, or he can get really rewarded here. Um, if he goes with the Patron, like, he has to go with the Patron. But if the bombs kill the Patron, he's not gonna have such a good experience. This can be game-changing. So you go Patron, and then you probably whirl in the Execute, and still attack with the Death Bite into the face, if your Patron survive. Yep. You want the bombs to hit the face, or hit the patrons for a low amount of damage, so that you can spawn even more patrons and dominate him even further. Well, those will die anyway from the second whirlwind, but will spawn more minions, more healthy, healthy minions, so that's important. Let's see how the bombs hit, it's really important. Oh, oh, oh for that's one! That's perfect. Yeah, perfect. that's really perfect. You want that. Now he'll have four patrons, two free threes and two free twos, and... Execute for boom. He he doesn't even need to whirlwind, do you? Uh, I think you do. I think you should do, you should do whirlwind. So like... you trade you trade the whirlwind and you trade a free one to get two free twos. So you buff one of your patrons by one HP and you get another patron. And that yeah, extra okay, patron yeah, yeah. can make the difference. Yeah, it is good to whirlwind. I like whirlwinding. Well, actually, maybe not because then you can play Frothing Berserker next turn. With Whirlwind and Charge. You want to make sure that your board survives, that's the thing. I know. You don't really want to lose the board, and that's like a way stickier board than the past one. Both die to Brawl, though. That was a really awkward turn. Like, two Whirlwind or not two Whirlwind? I, I don't think that's a easy call here. But for Max, it looks really grim. Isera and getting... Uh... I said awakens. awakens, but you get 12 damage. Doesn't matter. You can stabilize afterwards with something like a Belcher or a Top the Shield Slam or... Inner Rage, Inner Rage for Disco Pumper means game. Because then he has a Gromash Inner Rage for 12, so that's exactly lethal. And maybe not exactly lethal, one of all lethal. Fiery War Axe. He wants to clear the board, he wants to deal with the patterns. But... The if he plays Belcher, Inner Rage is again gonna be game changing. It's just a really consistent good card. Taskmaster would be okay too. It's 
So Taskmaster will deal a lot of damage because you play Warson Commander, Frotting, Taskmaster. But there's no Taskmaster. Okay, so what do you do in this situation? You can battle, you can battle rage. rage. Yeah, yeah. First battle rage. You can also get inner rage. You have two draws to get either Taskmaster or inner rage. If you play three copies in total of buffs, you have a pretty good chance to get it. Three out of whatever is remaining, and then. Hmm, second Warson Commander. That's not great. You don't have a really good way to deal with the Belcher. Uh, now I have to probably play Warson Commander, and then. What? He plays Frothing Berserker? Why would you do that? It's not bad, it's actually good. It was. Like, Warson Commander gives you free extra damage on, on spot when you trade your first patron. But then, is that free extra damage that important? You might want a. Uh, 6-4, a 6-4, uh, uh, 40 by second, I mean, sorry. Mm -hmm. So he had to choose between 3 damage on spot and having a 6-4 frothing. And now Max can, can do some really nifty plays. He can uh, attack one patron, BGH the frothing, and play Gromash to kill the other patron. Yeah. And, and that's like, GG. And if he would have played worse, like, that wouldn't have happened. He couldn't play the BGH. Yep. Yeah. That's why I didn't like uh, playing the Frothing Berserker. It's just weak when you, when it doesn't have a charge, you know? Yeah, this play looks really insane for Max Capone. As I said in some series ago, having BGH for Frothing is just insane. That's what you want to have. And it's even for two mana. Yeah, so now, from the Emperor. Disco Pumper has to go... He used both Executes. So there's no way he can deal with the, with the Gromash. He doesn't run BGH in that deck. Do you just play Emperor and pray? Emperor, Acolyte of Pain. Gromash. Okay, so he kills the big game hunter. Hmm. It's a risky play, but it might work out. He can just trade and play Zero Armor Smith. Yeah. That's really safe. First Armor Smith, so you gain one armor too. You can also trade. think of getting potential lethal. With like this bite, Krolta's master killed his Gromash, and then Armor's Myth Hero Power, he puts himself at 11. He just goes for the face, but then he can die to some really nifty Frothing Berserker combos. Well, he saw he? one Frothing Berserker, one Patron, right? He saw two Wins and two Executes, not in the Rages. Um, it's, really, it's really hard to calculate, you know? Um, what are Is the there odds? any way you die? 11, 11 damage. Well, he can die. Yeah, it's possible. An example with Death Spite and Warson Commander into double. There's a into double uh, Corsairs, an example. He goes for the play. He goes for the risky play. Okay. It's not bad. It's definitely not a bad play. It's like really hard for you to die. Oh, he also uses the whirlwind. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. He gains three points of armor here. Yeah, it's really good. I'm not sure if the whirlwind was needed, but it's just like extra safety. Like you will never need a whirlwind in this matchup, anyways. The, problem the only is... bad part is that you injure your monsters, but do you really care? Like he doesn't have a way to deal with the Gromash. Yeah, but um. Well, actually, yeah, you're right. But he, he needs will to kill, draw no, he will Rage. Kill the, he will kill the Gromash with the Loot Horror. Oh, yeah, you're right. So there's no lethal, and I think Max will not have an answer to that unless he draws a Brawl. It's really funny how this game played out. If he just traded and played Isera. Oh, Inner Rage. That, Inner Rage. Sweet. I think you played. it. Yeah, you played. You just gained... Uh, full health minion which will trade with the Gromash and then you have a 5-2 attack which will attack face, right? Yes. Or do you sacrifice the 5-2? No, 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 you sacrifice the 3-3 free free because that was the death fight anyway. He might be afraid of Baron Gaden, I don't know. But then he still has the weapon. I don't think that's correct. Yeah, I would attack with the 5-2 to the face. Oh wow, some greedy cards. That's game. Yeah. Mm, he can just play Isera, armor up, and get Isera Awakens. It's not really game. 3, 6, 9, 11 damage. That's 12. Okay, yeah, you're right. 
that's um, free of lethal. So any kind of weapon deals with the situation. No, it's it's lethal. No, it's key because you can play Warsong and Acolyte. No, no, no. I mean, if he doesn't kill the uh, Acolyte, I mean the Warsong commander, there's no way of surviving this, and he has no means of dealing with the Warsong commander. So does at least three points of damage from the hand. Yeah, so it's game over. Yeah. So Disco Pumper is going to win this. Uh series for and the whole event but that doesn't change anything apart from the seats because he already qualified for the playoffs yes but still we have to finish the game and uh, Max is thinking here hard what to do what to do to survive but he cannot he can't know he can know that he has no way of surviving this green pot and warrior just managed a really insane comeback yep Actually, is this survival? Hmm. No. No, there's no way. No, no, there's it's no exactly way. little. The, the only way he could win oh, look at that. was playing the uh, Izera earlier. So now let's see if Disco Pumper sees the little. You <laughs> should see it fairly, little, fairly easy. Yeah, yeah, well, players from players with grim patrons tend to miss lethals but i think that's too easy to to miss it yeah look at that he even has additional free damage from the hand still so yeah disco pumper takes the series gg congrats yeah. to disco pumper for his qualify win and max capon for the second um second place that was awesome to cast uh we have seen some Interesting matches uh, in a different format because it was Conquest best of three, so not the usual thing we are used to. And um, that's it for today. So, uh, the, just to remind you guys, uh, we will have another another qualifier at the end of this month on the last Sunday of May. Uh, it will be the same. Uh, as today, so open up to maximum 500 players and you can sign up on the site you have in the um, right lower corner of the screen, so Dr. Pepper D. And um, good luck. The more you play, the better you get. So yeah, And I the higher chances you have to prove yourself as a good player. Yeah, so I hope uh, everyone that was watching today will also try to play. Uh, we had... Uh, few K viewers I hope this will this will happen and um, we'll get maximum attendance next time excited for the playoffs in general I want to see who manages to win the Dr. Pepper all-star tournament in the end yeah there will be 16 players in the playoffs we have we know already the first four which is Max Capone uh, Disco Pumper, Chuck Rainy Luna, Hour, and Rainy Hour. Yes. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching, and till the next time. Bye bye, guys.